Finding the equation of a quadratic in vertex form when you're given the vertex and a point. That's going to be the main topic here, but before we get into it, I want to make sure that you can identify the vertex in these first five little equations that I've written out for you. Because sometimes um, students get confused because not all of the parts of y equals ax minus h squared plus k are in the equation. These equations are all still in vertex form. In other words, with each of these equations, I can tell you what all the transformations would be to the graph of y equals x squared. So in this first equation here, I'm sure that you can figure out what h and k are from this equation because it's identical to this format written out here. It has all a, h, and k in it. a is 2, h is negative 3, and k is minus 4. So the vertex for this one is very easy to see, and it would be, oh, I guess my pen dried out because I forgot to take put the top back on. Okay, so this one, the vertex would be minus 3 and minus 4. Okay, it's right there, right there. Don't forget, x's are weird. When you pull that one out from the bracket here, you have to change the sign because the equation has a minus h in it. Okay, so for this equation here, what is the vertex? So if you think about it in steps here, if I took off this plus 3 and I just had y equals 2x squared, or if I even took off the 2, you'd say, oh, that's just a vertex. The vertex for this one it would be at 0 and 0. When I do plus 3, that means I'm shifting the parabola up 3 units. So in this case, it's 0 and 3 because I could also write this equation like this. I could say 2x minus 0 squared plus 3. Okay, so you see if there's no bracket here with the x, the x does not have a horizontal shift. So the vertex here would be 0 and 3. In this one here, you can see that there is a horizontal shift. And remember, the vertex has nothing to do with the a value here. When I'm looking for the vertex, I just want to know what h and k are. So in this case, I could write this equation like this. Right? So really, the k is 0. In other words, it wasn't shifted up, up or down. It was just shifted right 5 units. So that 0, 0 went to 5 and 0. And this equation here, well, that's just x squared times 7, so 7x squared. So it has a vertical stretch by a factor of 7, but it wasn't shifted left or right, up or down. So this would be like me writing, um, we could write it like this, 7x minus 0 squared plus 0. Okay, so that would get you right back to that equation, and therefore the vertex is still 0, 0. And the last one here, a negative sign means it's concave down, but it has nothing to do with the vertex, but it does have lots to do with the shape of the function. And in this one, we can see that it's been moved to the right six units, but it hasn't been moved up or down. It has zero vertical shift. So that means that the vertex is going to be six and zero. Okay, so those are all the different combinations that you might see and which might give you a little bit of cause for concern. But now that you've seen it, I'm sure you'll have no problem working with those. Okay. So when we're asked to give the equation of a quadratic in vertex form, like this question here, it says give the equation in vertex form of a quadratic with vertex 3 and minus 5. So as soon as you see vertex, you should write over it, this is h and k, right? The vertex is h and k. It's up here as well. And here we go again, which is congruent two y equals x squared. So congruent, this just means that it has the same shape. So if it has the same shape, that means that there is no vertical stretch or compression. So in other words, we can just write this equation as y equals, we don't have any a, we have a shift, 
So we've shifted the h is 3, so we have x minus 3 squared um, minus 5. Okay, so this one would have the a value of 1, which is the same as the a value for this function, 1x squared. So it isn't that, it isn't very often that there, well, it, it can be that there is no um, a value other than 1. But you can see that if I had um, 3, 1, 2, 3, and minus 5, so let's go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see my vertex is here. If that's all I know about the function, I could draw you an infinite number of parabolas that have this as a vertex. It could be a parabola that's going to go like this, or it could be a parabola that's going to go like this, or it could be a parabola that's going up, or it could be a really flattened parabola like this. So you can see that just knowing this isn't sufficient for you to give me the vertex equation of the parabola unless you are told that it is congruent to y equals x squared. So you need to understand that and then we'll go on to the next question. So this time you're given the vertex 3 minus 2 it says find the vertex form of the quadratic. Okay, so you're probably saying, why she keeps saying vertex form? This is one of the forms of a quadratic. We're going to do vertex form, factored form, and standard form. Um, and each tells you something different, and we'll study those as we go along. So it says find the vertex form of the quadratic if it passes through 5 and 8. Okay, so... When you're given information in any question, identify what each one of these values is representing. So given the vertex 3 minus 2, that means I know that h is going to be equal to 3, and I know that k is equal to minus 2. And it passes through 5, 8. So that means that x is going to be 5, and y is going to be 8, because you know these are just coordinates of a point on the quadratic. So just like I was showing you in this sketch here, in order for you to find out what this point is, so let's see, what did we have 3 and minus 2? So let's say 1, 2, 3, and minus 2. So I'm right here, and it has to go through the point 5 and 8. So 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my parabola has to go like this. And because they're symmetrical, this one will be the same distance away. So something like that. So this has a very specific A value. And that's what I need to solve for. So it's not enough that you just plug some numbers in and, and hope you're doing the right work. You should understand that without another point on this graph, that there are an infinite number of parabolas that would have that same vertex. Okay, so let's go back to the question, and this will be really easy for you to do now. So you know that you're trying to find A. So this means find the A value. Find your A value. Okay, so how do I find an A value? Well, I'm going to use the vertex equal form the vertex equation. So I'm going to write out y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Now you need to memorize this because um, you're going to be using it a lot and you might not be given it on a test. I'm not sure. It depends on your teacher, but I wouldn't. I would expect that after you've done this amount of homework for this lesson that you would be pretty good at knowing the equation. Okay, so I have my little box of information over here. I know what H is, I know what K is, I know what an X is, and I know what a Y is. So that means I have everything in this equation except A. So if I plug all these values in, I'm going to be able to solve for A, and that's what I'm going to do. So I put in the 8. I'm solving for A. It's good that I have an unknown. My X is 5. And I'm going to subtract my h. So if this was minus, you would make this plus, but it's not. So it says minus 3. I'm going to square that. And then I have k here. Okay, so order of operations. 
you want to um, do what's in the brackets first here. So let, let's do it in lots of steps just so you don't get lost. So 5 minus 3 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. So this is 8 equals 4a minus 2. I bring the 2 to the other side of the equation. Of course I add, that gives me 10 is 4a and finally I'm going to divide by 4 to get 1a. So a is going to be equal to 10 over 4 or 5 over 2. And now your final statement, it, you were asked to find the vertex form, so that doesn't say just find a, but you need to find a in order to give the equation. Now remember when you have an equation, equations have x's and y's in them, so you're not going to plug back in x and y here. That is giving you, this is the the equation that allows you to find all sorts of points. So you don't want x and y values. You want the variables there, but not a value. So this is going to be 5 halves. And I leave the x, so I have x and y in my equation. And I'm going to subtract the h, that's 3. Don't forget to square it. And my k is minus 2. And there's your equation. You found the a. And then finally you plugged it back into the equation and now I could say when x is 5, when x is 7, when x is 20, what is y? And that's why we make up all these little equations so you can find other points on the graph and also you can find out whether or not, and that's my next question, whether or not a certain point is on the parabola. So given this equation here, you need to find out whether or not 1, 16 is on the parabola. So what does that mean? It means that if I plug in 1 for x, my height of the function should be 16. Right? In other words, you're just plugging in x is 1 here and solving for y. And if you get 16, then it's going to be on the parabola. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say um, y is equal to 3 times 1 plus 1 squared plus 4. Order of operations, add first. Do what's in the brackets first. That's 2. You square is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 4 is 16. So your teacher may ask you to do something like left side, right side. So you would say um, left side y equals 16, right side, and then you would plug in this stuff. So 3, 1 plus 1 squared plus 4, and you get 16 equals 16. Um, y there, you see right, left side equals this. Now, you might not be asked to write it up this way. I would say if you plugged it in, you see y equals 16, and that's the point. So therefore, 1 16 is on, is on the parabola. And we'll do one more here, is 2 and 23, 2 and 23. So left side equals 23, I'll write it all up in a fancy way this time. And so right side equals 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 4. And you're going to plug in x is 2. So we get 3, 2 plus 1 squared plus 4. And that gives me 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 plus 4 is 31. And you'd say left side is not equal to right side. Therefore, 2, 23 is not on the parabola. The parabola, okay? So that's a more formal response. This plugging it in and then checking if it equals. Uh, it's probably not as fancy. In this one, you probably should have said left side equals right side. Format is important in math. This is a pretty much nicer, a pretty much nicer solution. Okay, so that's a little lesson on how to find the equation in vertex form of a quadratic. Um, whether you're told that they are congruent or whether you're given another point. And of course, the whole reasoning behind why you can't just plug in the vertex and leave it. You have to find an A value unless you're told the function is congruent to the other one.
Okay, hope that helps you out. Bye for now.